Hi, Mr. Palmer here. Got a little video on uh, testing and debugging strategies for A level computer science. It's Friday night, I've got about four of these, so I'm gonna start banging them out like as if I had a hammer. Okay, so the big question all right, why is the testing limited? Can you describe a range of testing strategies? Can you select suitable test data for a given problem? And can you do a dry run? It's gonna be a bit of a long one, all right? So make sure you get your pen ready. <laughs> So testing strategies, okay, basically the test strategy um, will be defined uh, early on in the life cycle of a project because you're going to, the, the, they will decide actually what strategies they are they're going to use when testing the, the code to make sure that it's a suitable solution, okay? So we think in here in terms of like the box approach, alpha, beta, destruction testing, and then at the end of the whole process, acceptance testing before you hand over the solution to the client, all right? So in terms of the box solution, okay, first of all, black box testing. So black box testing basically assumes that the system is like a black box. You've got no idea what's going on inside it. You're putting an input, you get an output. Is the out actual output what you expected in correspondence to that input, okay? So the tester basically is putting data into and receiving output from the different test objects, okay? We, um, we're cut, it's the best way to test the system is to cut it down and test each function in isolation by itself and then in do some integration testing by putting the functions together all right the test is, is basically verifying whether the output behavior is what was expected in the particular test case all right so question there is it possible to test every single possible input to a system it's not really if you think about it and actually is it worth even testing every single possible input I if a system can accept from zero to two thousand as an input for a particular variable uh, you test zero and one and two and three and four and five and six yawn 558 559 560 561 snoring away 1181 1182 a bit boring okay it's not really a, a point not much point there in accessing every single possible input and it's not always possible to test every single possible combination of inputs Right, so the solution is basically you want to group similar inputs together. You may remember about normal, extreme and invalid data. Normal being the data that you expect in normal operation, extreme being data at boundary values, and then invalid data being the data that is not acceptable. Okay? You test a representative sample. If a sample that um, of that uh, data group um, Pass it, uh, you know, has the expected outcome, and then you will therefore assume that the system functions as intended, right? So, what are the positives and negatives of this approach? Basically, it's a it's an ask and thou shall receive type principle. Okay, the tester usually is not the person that coded the system, so they don't really know how the code works. So they're going to assume that if I put this data in, I should get this output or not. All right, and then they basically can often find bugs that the coder didn't come across when they were coding because they're not biased in their approach to testing okay a disadvantage of this though is that because they don't know how the code works they might actually do thousands of tests that are unnecessary when a single test might actually you know prove that the system is functional uh, under those circumstances uh, just to, uh, when I say thousands that's a bit of hyperbole yeah uh, but they might do loads of tests where one single test might suffice okay white box testing is a exact opposite okay you know you put in your you know when you put these inputs in you get this kind of an output and actually what you're doing is you're looking inside it and seeing how the algorithm actually is functioning and is what is happening at each stage what you expect to happen at each stage okay so you're testing basically the path of execution the flow through the algorithm all right if you think about the plus or minus of this approach you know what what can you think see there all right First of all, um, think about the paths of execution, what is controlling them. It's going, you know, you're looking at your selection, you're looking at your iteration. So when you know that, basically, the, uh, the person who's doing the, uh, the white box testing, they will be able to isolate and test the most important functions of a system and prove that those most important functions uh, perform as required. Okay? Uh, when you do white box tests, basically, um, in part of your documentation, you need to note the line numbers, need to know whether conditions are true or false and the values of different variables okay so that's basically uh you know one one way of doing this is you could do dry run okay so here you use a trace table 
and you go to each line of code and you watch what happens with different variable values. So here's an example. Okay, it's a good time to hit pause right now and just have a look at the algorithm on the left hand side and see how it works. So I'm assuming you press play again. Uh, here is the test data. So we're going to test it with x equals one. All right. So here's my test table. And I'm going to start off at line one and begin the algorithm to line two. Uh, line two, I'm going to input x. So x is now equal to one. All right. We now go into line three. And rem is going to be equal to x mod two. So one mod two gives me a remainder of one. So rem is now equal to one. I go on to line four. Oops, Daisy. I've just jumped a whole number of slides somehow. How did that happen? Right. So I've uh, now gone to line four. Um, the condition is true. So therefore, I'm going to go inside that selection, that pathway. And I go into line five. There's a typo for me right there. It's going to be odd, not even. And then that branch is now complete. So I skip to line eight and then line nine and I end my um, algorithm. OK, so you can see there I've gone through the different that I've gone through a particular pathway of tracing the values of the different variables as it's uh, as it as that's taking place. OK, so I've got destruction testing. Basically, what we're doing here is we're trying to break the system by putting in data that we know is not what the system should be expecting. So obviously, when we talked about black box testing, those are the invalid inputs that will break the system that, that are not normal data. OK, you can do other things as well, though, for example, like loading corrupt files, clicking in areas of the screen that you're not supposed to click on. All right. Uh, just to see what will happen. Uh, then now the next thing, another test strategy here is alpha and beta testing. So that is carried out when the software is almost complete. Alpha testing is basically when a small set of in-house employees. So there are people who work within the software company will test a late version of the software to find bugs within it. Now, this is advantageous because obviously um, you don't want to release software to um, for, uh, your customers that may have um, huge glaring bugs in it. It allows you to refine your software to come up with some form of a relief candidate. All right. Uh, disadvantage of it, obviously, is that the people who are in-house are going to have some form of some knowledge of the system. They're likely to be testing it on the same or similar hardware software kind of combinations as yourself. All right. So once you've done some form of alpha testing and you're satisfied, you've rapidly been able to refine um, your solution um, by um, removing bugs and rebuilding. All right. You might want to engage in some beta testing. That's when you release it to a small sample of users outside of the company. So your software is now basically in the wild. That means that you're allowing um, customers uh, or users out there in the wild. They have different hardware and software combinations to use. They may have different physical devices. They may have different versions of Windows, different drivers for different whatever different components in the computer. And you can see how your software performs in all these different combinations that you may have not been able to during your in-house testing and your alpha testing. So you're able to basically get more of a, a wider range of um, uh, uh, environments. Uh, your, your software is exposed in a wider range of environments. All right. Finally, you want to engage in some acceptance testing. And this is when you basically show your um, system over to your uh, client and then they will basically um, accept the, the system and they will say, yep, uh, you've met all the criteria. And then at the end of it, they pay you. So you should be able to. Oh, here we go. I forgot. I've got one more uh, thing to talk about here. So why is testing actually limited? OK, so um, basically this is a quote from Edgar Yixtra, where basically testing can be used very effectively to show the presence of bugs, but not their absence. So basically, when you test your system, you're able, because you're testing it with particular sets of data on particular environments, particular hardware software combinations, whatever it is. OK, you're basically able to find a bug. OK, that matches that particular operating criteria but there may be a criteria that you haven't thought of okay which will cause your system to fall over all right uh, another way of thinking about it is testing can basically never be completed because there are an infinite number of hardware and software and uh, data combinations that your system could possibly run under and so uh, you know you, you can't sit there forever paying someone to do that testing 
for you in every single possible combination all right so you have to you know create those representative test cases try your system under the test cases and then basically draw a line at some point and release your software all right and that's the end of that so you should have some idea of uh, basically different test strategies um, how to pick test data well, we talked about normal valid uh, so normal invalid and extreme data and about grouping them uh, and you should understand some of the limitations of testing and you should also be able to do a dry run thank you very much